Welcome to worship. Today is the first Sunday in Lent. On Ash Wednesday, we began our journey towards baptismal immersion in the death and resurrection of Christ. This year, during the Sundays in Lent, we are led to focus on the five covenants that God makes in the Hebrew Scripture and to use them as lenses through which to view baptism. We will hear all about this during our readings and the message this morning as we strive for the new life that we are given in baptism for the sake of the whole world. On this Sunday, we always begin our liturgy with a great liturgy. Let us begin. Thank you. 
Genesis chapter 9. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my vow 
in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth, when I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds. I will remember my covenant that is between me and you, and every living creature of all flesh, and the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it, and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, This is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God. sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water, and baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God, with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. The word of God, the word of life. Thanks be to God.
In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. I don't know if you've had a chance to see some of the images that have been on the news. We have spacecraft and telescopes that are able to go out farther into what we consider to be outer space. There have been really some beautiful images of God's creation far out into the distance. Last week I talked about some of the perceptions of astronauts and how they view the Earth a photograph of the Earth from outer space reveals how much of our world is filled with water. Indeed, that cosmic view prompted people to refer to Earth as a blue marble in space. Scientists report that approximately 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water. In our reading today from Genesis, we hear about a time when Reportedly, 100% of the earth, the surface of the earth, was covered by water. The story of Noah and the flood provide images of water and also the salvation power of God, signs of divine love and grace. During the season of Lent this year, we will be looking at the five covenants that God established with God's people in an earlier time and also with us. The first covenant was with Noah, followed by the covenants with Abraham, Moses, David, and the new covenant revealed to us in Christ, all expressions of God's divine love and faithfulness. Covenants are a singularly important theme throughout the Bible. In the Old Testament covenants, God is revealed as being dependable and faithful with Noah, Abraham and David. During the time of the prophets, a new covenant was promised, and we hear about it in Jeremiah chapter 31. And in the Gospel of Luke, we hear about Christ as the embodiment of the new covenant. We recall that each time we receive the Eucharist. The covenant that God establishes with Noah represents the very first in a larger pattern of covenants that are found throughout the pages of Holy Scripture. God is the one who initiates a covenant. It includes people who are living now and even in the future. A covenant with God is accompanied by some physical sign and we know for Noah that was the rainbow in the sky. God placed it in the sky as a sign of God's promise to never flood the earth again. It also serves as a very wholesome reminder to us that God is concerned with all of creation, the entire planet, every creature, great or small. Two times God assures Noah that God will remember the covenant between them. That language may seem strange for us as we know about God's omniscience. In life, we set timers and alarms put sticky notes on our mirrors and refrigerators, keep calendars and lists of things to do, all as reminders for us of things that we do not want to forget. Maybe that rainbow in the sky served as God's sticky note when the heavenly body 
a multicolored note from God himself that says, in effect, don't forget that agreement that was made with Noah and all the people who followed. The way that that word remember is used in the Old Testament connotes a much higher purpose. To remember is to do something important and meaningful, something significant, something that is needed. It would be comparable to remember someone's birthday or anniversary. And within that context, <clears throat> to remember means more than merely having it occur to you that a loved one's birthday is next month. To remember would be intentional and cause an action that is relational and loving. And in a similar way, that's what covenants are all about with God. When God assures Noah that God will remember the covenant between them, God is providing a guarantee of the relationship that God has with Noah and with all of us. A relationship that offers divine love, forgiveness, redemption, a hopeful future, and everlasting life. In the Gospel of Mark, there's beauty and significance in Jesus' initial declaration when he says, the time is fulfilled. This time that Jesus is referring to is not merely the minutes and hours marked on the face of a clock. This time is an appointment on the calendar, on God's very own calendar. In the Gospel of Matthew, the word used for time means to bear witness to the way the Old Testament covenants are connected to people and the work, life, death, and resurrection of Christ. His own purpose in relationship to the law, the prophets, and all of us to signal something that is complete and completed through Christ. According to Jesus in our gospel for today, the time had come for the good news and the kingdom of God to be revealed. There's an old fable that a man imagines a handful of blind men positioned around an elephant. After taking a moment to explore with their hands the animal before them, each is asked to describe the elephant. Well, one of them is holding on to the trunk, another the tail, another a tusk, and so on. So they come up with very different descriptions of what an elephant is like. Well, the fable may be used for all sorts of mischief, of course, but it does provide a helpful image. Mainly that some truths are larger and more complex than any one person can fully understand or sufficiently describe. And baptism may be one of those truths. A variety of imagery is used in scripture and beyond to unpack the mystery of baptism. It becomes the first prominent recorded moment in Jesus' adult life. The Gospel of Mark does not furnish many of the details in the same way that Matthew and Luke do. Mark just gives us just the facts, straightforward. Jesus came from Galilee to Jordan, we're told, where he was baptized by John. And as Jesus emerges from the Jordan River, the Spirit comes down upon him and we hear the Father's voice spoken to him from heaven. This is my beloved Son, we're told in the Gospels that we are to listen to him. While we understand that a baptism of repentance was not necessary for Jesus, it was expected of all of the others who were baptized. And Peter clearly had that in mind. And Peter tells us that it's not merely a bath. It's cleansing exceeds the removal of dirt from the body. It is the outward sign of God's inward grace that God gives to us through Christ who died and rose again. In Peter's account of baptism, the language used goes beyond the image of washing. It includes the language of salvation, of saving. Peter senses a resonance with the story of the flood and observes that Noah and his family were saved through water. And so are we in the waters of baptism. 
Alan Stibbs points out in his commentary, the first epistle, general of Peter, that the flood spoke of judgment, which those in the ark were both saved from and saved by in order to enjoy a new world, a new life. In a similar way, people are saved from and saved by God's grace in the waters of baptism to experience the gift of God's Holy Spirit and to enjoy a new life filled with hope and future. Paul saw death and resurrection in the imagery of baptism by immersion. We read about it in the books of Romans and Colossians. Baptism then becomes a kind of watery grave, yet not because we perish, but because we experience forgiveness and new life there. Amen. Sins. We 
seed needs and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. Through our Savior Jesus the Christ, we call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join your unending hymn. Thank you. 
Help us be one moment to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, who is the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. <clears throat> May God bless you and keep you. May God shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Are there announcements today? I think it's the actual date for Martin Luther. Yeah, it is. October 18th. Yeah, I don't know if you all heard that. Erica mentioned that today is actually the date of Martin Luther's yeah, death. On the Sunday. Yeah. Doesn't always happen that way because we often commemorate as we're near a date, but this year we're on the date, so that's great. Just would like to mention that we're continuing our traditions throughout Lent, even of sharing coffee and conversation in the memorial room following Mass if you like to stay. It's not a full fellowship time in regard to refreshments, but we'll be refreshed in our conversations together. Also, would like to mention, uh, just as a reminder, that there are devotional booklets for Lent on the table where the bulletins are kept for any of you who've not had a chance to pick one up yet. And also would like to remind you that this week, on Wednesday, we start the shared worship service with Trinity and also St. Matthew and Sea Caucus. And Trinity and Goda is the host location again this year. Uh, I'm not preaching this week but uh, all the pastors give a good message, so don't wait just for me. I'd like you to be able to go. And I'm not sure because pastors didn't talk about this, but in the past there's actually been a little luncheon with it also. Um, so I didn't hear that, but I would assume that there probably is. Trinity always extends a lot of hospitality in that regard. So every Wednesday during Lent, we will gather there at noon for a shared worship service together. This week on Tuesday at 7.30 is our church council meeting, and I probably will be sending out a Zoom link for that along with my report later this afternoon. Um, and as far as I know, in the memorial room on Wednesday, and you all will attend Janet, um, there is a prayer shawl ministry, right? Yes. 1.30. And on Thursday, virtually, via Zoom, We'll continue our study of the ELC World Hunger Lent Study Guide, 40 Days of Giving as our Bible study on Thursday at noon. And I also mentioned in the bulletin that the district meeting actually this year is bringing together several different clusters for the first time uh, since I've been a pastor. And the schedule will be held on Sunday, March 2nd, between the hours of, of 10 a.m. Uh, that's got to be wrong. Uh, so I'll, I'll have to look at that. It's probably Saturday, March 2nd. That was a misprint in the, in the bulletin. I did that by mistake. Uh, March 2nd probably is a Saturday between the hours of 10 and 2. And this year it will be held at St. John's Lutheran Church in Summit. So the address is in the bulletin. It's open not only to pastors, but anyone who would like to attend. And you don't need to give a reservation for it. Uh, I'm told that I'll be, be providing lunch at no cost. So the theme this year is, um, where is the theme this year? Uh, De-escalation conversation for the election of Senate Council and Churchwide Assembly voting members. If you choose to attend that, you'll have opportunities to meet with other people across the Senate uh, for the various clusters as well. I think that pretty much covers it. Are there any updates from the Giddy or just keep praying? Keep praying, yeah. Keep praying. <laughs> yeah. Keep praying. Keep praying. There's so much disruption in so many places in the world now. And as we know, you know, children and those who are most vulnerable, as adults even, are the ones that often will suffer the most. Uh, so always engage in prayer. Remember that. A part of the season of Lent actually is for us to engage in prayer more often. And, uh, you know, if you can set some time aside each day, go into a quiet room, and just pray for some of these situations in the world and people that you are aware of who have special need. Uh, God is listening. Uh, 
believe it or not, God is listening and God does care. God also depends on all of us to do as much as we can in order to relieve the suffering as well. So with that, I'll just give a, a reminder too that the ELCA disaster response and the ELCA World Hunger are two organizations of our denomination that provide care in those regions in the world that need it. Uh, you can either send in a check as a contribution to them directly, or you can give online through their websites. All you need to do is, in your search engine, look up those organizations, and their address will come up soon. You know, can you not tell on what you were saying about the ELCA World Hunger? We got communication from the ELCA that this is their 50th year of sponsoring that particular program from the ELCA. And what the mission committee decided to do is to, in fact, it's a mission of the month that we support, but it's back in November. So we kind of switched things up a little bit and the check has been sent for the $150 that's good. for the World Hunger. Okay, that's over and above whatever else you may want to do. And also to add to that, and you may be aware of this already, but a lot of those organizations will actually buy the supplies either on location or nearby. So, you know, we're accustomed to our own cost of living in this country, but other countries often you can buy so many more supplies for the money that we can buy. So, you know, don't ever feel that your offering can't do very much because it does, regardless of what you send in. It, it's all helpful and together, obviously, all of the, the offerings can do quite a bit more. And the ELCA, I'm very proud to say, is always among the first boots on the ground in those locations. Sometimes they are the first boots on the ground. And I've even heard that on the news. I don't know if you've ever heard that in the past, even with our social ministry organizations as well. Erica. So could we say a special prayer for Mary Sue today? She's going to see the doctor on Monday and she has ovarian cancer. So we don't know if the how bad and all that kind of thing until Monday, but let's pray that it's not so bad. Is she getting more diagnostics? That's still coming up. Just for seeing her. the right uh, doctor on Monday. So she's just been diagnosed, but they haven't done a lot of research on it. Yeah, probably just now. Yeah. And do let her know that we're praying for her because yeah. what I do and I'm sure others do it also in the congregation that even after we leave the church, we continue our prayers from home. So let them know that as well. So let us pray together. Um, and I'm also going to include Katie in this too, because I know that the children in particular and those adults who are trying to care for them have great challenges. Let us pray together. Lord God, it's always scary when a person gets a diagnosis for an illness that can result in being very severe. We lift you today, Lord God, Mary Sue, as she has just been diagnosed um, with cancer. Lord God, we pray that, that you may enter into her space of anxiety, uh, uncertainty, fear, whatever she may be experiencing emotionally, that you enter in and, and just keep your arms around her, Lord God, that she may feel your presence in a way that brings forth her strength and also encouragement. Lord God, we pray for those who will be attending to her, the diagnosticians and the medical staff, Lord God, who will be researching more how severe her illness is. We pray, Lord God, that they may be able to use their skills in the best of their ability, their education, to be their hands, their minds, and their way of doing things, Lord God. We pray also that in the days ahead, regardless of, of what they learn, that she may be able to receive the best care possible. Be with her, Lord God, now and always, as we know that you are, and we are grateful for your presence always. Lord God, we also lift to you the, the families, the children, the adults, all who are in Haiti, Lord, as they struggle just to survive with gang, gangs running the country and, and running the streets, kidnappings, and a lot of corruption and violence, Lord God. Haiti is one of the places in the world where so much is wrong, so much is violent, Lord, and we can only imagine the terror for the adults trying to protect children and keep them in safety. Lord God, we entrust them to your care also. The people of Gaza, the hostages who are there, the families who are living in fear, the children 
who are requiring care from the adults, <clears throat> Lord God, and in Sudan, and in Uganda, where there's dictatorship, so many places in the world, Lord God, we pray that, that you use us in a way that is beneficial. We pray, Lord God, also that good can prevail, that peace can prevail, that love can be restored in the world, and that all may be able to experience equality and justice, care, education, medical care, and all the needs, Lord God, we pray in Jesus' name. I think this ending hymn is especially meaningful today for us as we share together some of our concerns because we're reminded that Jesus still does lead on. Let us stand and sing together. <laughs> Thank you. 